Mm. How many fights do you reckon you've had? Over 100. All in professional land, bare knuckle I've land. Just... Of, I've had a lot of fights outside yeah. of the ring. when I was, I've been fighting all my life since I've been a small boy. I had my first fight when I was five. Wow. And I remember it because I got entangled in barbed wire because I was fighting an older boy. And it was, uh, we was got fighting and I got wrapped up in barbed wire and I got ripped to pieces as a kid with a barbed wire. And I remember I thought, my mum's going to kill me because I've ripped all my jumper on that, you know what I'm saying? Ripped my shirt. <laughs> I wasn't bothered more about scared of your mum. I was more scared of my mum because I'd ripped my clothes on the barbed wire and I was wet through with blood because it was that's what it was because the barbed wire had done more damage than me and him could do at that age. Mm. You know, but that's my earliest memory of fighting. And it went from there on, you know. Mm. And it just snowballs, don't it? Out of control. You know, people say something, especially when you go out for a drink. That's when it used to happen a lot because... People, there's different people in drink than what they are sober, aren't they? You know, and a drunken man speaks a sober mind and he's worse to come out of him what he thought about you and then we'd end up fighting. You know, and that was it. That was a regular occurrence. So probably more than 100, mm. actually. You know, when you end up with a pair of hands like them, you can see. Wow, look at your middle finger yeah. there. That's been broken, hasn't it? It's all, you know, it's war, isn't it? Yeah. It's war, but it's a, a world of war I'm accustomed to for a long time and it's part it's a norm for me mm. winning and losing is a part of life you know and at the end of the day, I take it all on the chin but do I go out and do the best I can I do even today I try to be the best I possibly can at everything I do mm. you know because I found in life coming second you might as well not come anywhere at all you might as well come 20 seconds a second people only want to know winners the losers take a back seat and only, they only judge you on your last performance mm. in anything, not just fighting, the way you are, your last meeting, your last speech, your last conversation. They always remember that. Mm. And that's how I find life to be. And how many of those 100 plus fights do you reckon you won? I've never lost outside ever. Never? Never lost outside the ring ever, no. No. I can honestly say that there's not a man out there can say what's been born, what's beat John Fury outside the ring. Wow. No one ever and, beat me. And in the ring? I lost a couple in the ring, yeah, mm. because I wasn't fit and I was, tra I was trained athletes. Yeah. And a lot of people look at my record and say, yeah, you had 13 professional fights. But out of those eight wins, or nine wins what I had, I was never supposed to win anyone. I wasn't supposed to win any of them because I was always in the away corner. Mm -hmm. I was what they call a paid journeyman, but I kept winning. And in them days, winning used to cost me money. Why is Be that? Because they only wanted to book you to make a prospect look better. Right. I was there to lose, but every time I got in with a prospect, I won. You know, because I had this fire inside of me, but I got overmatched early. I was fight I'd only had 10 fights, I was up fighting a world-class man. And those men had training camps. I was working all day. I'd do my daily duties, which was hard work in them days. It was manual labor. I'd finish at five o'clock, have me tea. No such thing as a dietitian in them days. <laughs> I'd have my tea, put my feet up, and then drive me some maybe 50, 100 miles to the venue in an old scrap car, fight and get me money and come home. I did it as an hobby. Mm. And it wasn't me uh, first and foremost love boxing. I did it to provide for the family mm. because I was, a, I was always a, a young father. I've been a father since I've been 18 years old. In our culture, you've got to provide for yourself. You can't go back to your mother or your father and say, lend me 20 pounds or I'm a bit stuck today. Mm. That don't happen in our culture. They say, you make your bed, you lay on it. Mm. And I thought, I've got to get money how I can. And if I had a slack week, I'd be ringing up the manager who's called Ever Ready Tommy. You know, <laughs> you ring his <laughs> Ever phone. Ever Ready Tommy. Yeah, Tommy Miller from Halifax. I could ring his phone and say, Tommy, any work? Oh, he said, there's a prospect here, he's unbeaten or something like that. I said, yeah, how much is it? Oh, 300 quid, yeah, book me for Saturday night. Mm. You know, and the only, the only train I've ever done was myself. You know, I went to the gym, I think, a couple of nights a week. You know, and if I couldn't make it for work, I'd skip it and leave it, you know. I was never 100% fit, but what I did have was a, I was game. I had a good fighting heart, good fighting spirit, and only beat me. The only people that beat me was world-class people, and the ones I lost because I wasn't training at all, and they was, and I was in over my head. But I didn't start when I was 22 with the gloves on. Mm. You know, I never had one amateur about ever. I was never decorated, and I was fighting people. I had ABA four times, ABA champions, Olympic bronze medalist. You know, Enric, I wonder what I fought in 91. He was the most decorated amateur the country's ever seen. You know, he was 14 and 0 as a professional, knocked everybody out. He just knocked a world champion out, J.B. Williamson, in one round. And I've got him on a week's notice, so I thought, yeah, you're paying. I've had a good hiding before. 
for nothing. Mm. So I'm getting paid, so I'm in. And that's how I lived my life. But I was always game. And I thought, you know what? If somebody would have sponsored me and put money up and give me training camps and give me the chances other boxers had, I probably would have been better myself. Mm. You know, it must be something to breed what I bred. You know, honestly, you can't breed a world champion like Tyson had or something that isn't a fighter himself. Mm. Yeah, you can, but it's a rare thing, isn't it? But in Tyson's case, he's a full package. And you know, I would have been the full package because I had everything. The only thing I never had was people putting time and effort into me. And I was used and abused in the boxing world. Mm. Or, but listen, that's life. But what I did do is picked up a wealth of knowledge of how you can get threatened in the boxing game. And it's not nice at a lower level. If you're not the golden boy, you're not the house fighter, you're in for a rough ride, mm. a white knuckle ride. You know, I had the white knuckle rides. I got the good hidings, all for nothing. I had 13 fights, never made three and a half thousand pounds out of all of them. Because I was only boxing for hundreds of pounds at short notice. But what I did realise was that the people in boxing, most of the time, could not be trusted. And it was all about them, not you. Mm. And I never wanted any of my boys to box, because I thought there was never any future in boxing. All you're going to get is your brains rattled. Messing with athletes, what's doing it day and night, it's their full-time job. And me as a part-timer, going into that, well, I'm lucky I can still string a sentence together. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, I thought, you know, I'm not having miles go through this. You know, but Tyson, it was in him to do it. Mm. And wild horses could not keep him away from the <laughs> boxing gym. <laughs> even all, even the... Even all the rubbish you to tell them about boxing, leave it. If, you're gonna, if you can't be a world champion, it's not worth bothering with. Don't give up your day job. If you're not special, you won't get looked after. They aid me say all that. Because I never have a big boxing up because it wasn't kind to me. But they still did Do it. you think that made them want it more rather than you being a pushy parent trying to force them in? Probably so, you know, because I didn't like the boxing side of it. You know, I packed all my stuff away in a box and I never wanted to see daylight ever again. Because in 95, when I walked away from it, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to get damaged here. I'd been out the ring five years, taking fights, two weeks' notice. And I remember boxing that night, and I thought, you know what, you must be mad. All I could hear was big thudding punches around my head, what I wasn't prepared for. And I'm thinking, you're not getting millions of pounds or thousands or even hundreds. You know, forget about this job. And when I got beat in that final fight, I thought, that's the end of the boxing career for me. I put all my stuff in a cardboard box, so that's not coming out ever again. But every time I come back from work when Tyson was of age, he had me boxing shorts on, he had me boots on, <laughs> he had my head guard on. <laughs> and that used to, I used to, that used to greet me, you're thinking, oh, here we go again. Put them back, you see. They're unlucky, leave them. <laughs> but it still never deterred him. Mm. He went on to do what he'd done. Because mm. he said, it's destiny. Nobody can alter destiny. What's for you won't pass you by. And him to do this, he was put on this earth to do this special thing he's doing. And he's helping people outside the ring, not just in it. Mm. And I hope he continues to do so. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Now, if you like this, we have a full, deep interview, the uncut, unedited version. So if you want to watch that, the link is below. But first, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel.